here at the University of Florida, IFAS, Mid-Florida Research and Education Center, and I am joined by Dr. Lance Osborne. Thanks Hello. so much for joining us. My pleasure. Tell us what type of research that you do here. Well, I'm the entomologist, so I work on mites and other uh, arthropods, insects and uh, uh, like springtails, things that aren't even insects. So those creepy crawlies is what I work on. Okay, so you work on them. What are some of the things you're researching? What are some of your goals? My goals are to, to help growers to be able to make money. That's the bottom line. Huh. So we work with uh, looking at chemicals and pesticides, but that's not 100% sustainable in this industry anymore. So we're also looking at biological controls as ways to manage pests, both in the greenhouse on ornamentals and in people's yards and, and in their houses. What are biological controls? Biological controls are we use one organism that will feed or, or kill another organism. So it's kind of like biological warfare. But we use things that are all around us every day. We just figure out how to manipulate them and use them. So we use ladybugs. We use, uh, I patented a fungus that kills insects. And then uh, there's little tiny wasps that you don't even see that are hundreds of them and you don't even know they're around. That is fascinating, and I'm sure so much better for us, for the environment. Show us what you have today. Okay, well, one of the things we've been doing, one of the major pests in this industry is called the white fly. Okay. It's one of the limiting factors in producing fruits and veg or vegetables, mainly in Florida, like tomatoes and cucurbits and that sort of thing. But it's a major pest of ornamentals. And so we look at using a little tiny ladybug, which are in this vial here. They're so small, you almost can't see them. They're kind of orange in color, and they eat white flies. Yeah. Okay, I just have to say, I never knew ladybugs could be that small. This is, this is probably the smallest one we deal with. Wow. So, but they're very mighty. They're very powerful. They do an amazing job of controlling white flies. In fact, they're working better than pesticides are. Really? Yes. This is fascinating. But the problem is, a homeowner or a grower can't buy these. So we've had to figure out how can these growers get access and how can a homeowner get access to these. So we developed what we call a banker plant system. Okay. So we grow papaya. Papaya has a white fly that just feeds on papaya. Okay. okay. So I bring these papaya in this greenhouse and these white flies don't get on anything else unless there's other papaya in here. The beetles will feed on that papaya white fly. Okay. And so when they get hungry, they're going to fly off and they're going to look for the bad white fly that we want to kill. And if they're not in here, they're just going to starve to death. But if they're in here, they get eaten by the beetle. So it's and so we're banking good guys on these papaya plants. Okay, and you have an example of white flies, right? Yeah. Just, I've it, seen these on plants before, but didn't know what I was looking at. A lot of the little tiny things are white flies, but you can see there's some little uh, yellow things there that are a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. those are the pupil stage of that little beetle. And so all of these are going to turn into beetles and they've run out of food here so they've got to look through the greenhouse and they're like like little scouts, like you know we send scouts out there to find the bugs. These things do our work for us. Wonderful. Okay, so that's, that's the, the gist of it. Okay, and what else do you have to show us? Okay, well another problem in the industry, more chemicals are sprayed for controlling spider mites than anything else. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's a, a commercial industry for selling the predators that eat those. But for a homeowner, they can't afford it. It'll cost them, you know, five bucks for a thousand predators, but they have to spend $30 to have them shipped to them. Okay. So what we've developed is a system where you can grow just using lima beans, okay? okay. From the grocery store, we put them in a pot, and then w as we need them, in our units here, we, we take them off and harvest them from the plant. So this is a lima bean plant Yeah, right this here. is a lima okay. bean plant that you can grow on the patio, on the porch, whatever. Yeah. And so we take a leaf. There's no bugs on here at all. We put it in here where we have spider mites growing. Okay. So we take them off a plant that we need to protect and we start a little colony. Okay. okay. And so we put this in here and when they get infested with spider mites, we take them out and we put them over in this container if I can get the lid yeah. off. There we go. And this has got a predatory mite. I mean, you can see the difference. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and the predators are color coded. So the predators are red and orange, and the bad guys are kind of yellow with spots on them. 
so you can tell the difference. The idea being that maybe a homeowner isn't going to do this, but maybe a garden club might do it. We have garden clubs now that are interested in producing some of these things. And so whenever uh, uh, somebody in the garden club needs predators, they can go in. And, and this is all the space you need. You don't need any more space than this, just, except a place to grow a bean plant. Wow. And this is, we have a whole paper we put together. So this could be done in an elementary or a high school to teach kids what biocontrol is. Wow. Dr. Osborne, this research is so fascinating. How do you see it contributing to the lives of people here in, in Florida? This allows the people in Florida to use things that are already here, okay? It helps most of the chemicals that are used in the landscape that you can buy at some of the big stores. By the time they get to the big stores and they can sell them, they don't work on the pests anymore because of pesticide resistance. And so we're trying to find tools that the general public can use and we don't have to worry about poisoning the environment or being misused or some of these chemicals, if you apply, apply them wrong, they can damage the plants more than the bugs do. Thank you so much for sharing oh. all of this uh, with us today and also for, you've dedicated your life to this type of research and we appreciate Thank it. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us and hopefully you too enjoyed learning about some of the great research that goes on here.